Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Today I'm going to be planting a crepe myrtle. This one's called Berry Dazzle. It's a dwarf, but anything I show you here would apply to pretty much any crepe myrtle. I've actually already dug this hole and I've included videos in the description of this video for planting woody trees and shrubs and I kind of go over tools and techniques for digging. Uh, if you have an area that's like heavy clay like mine is and it's harder to dig, you might want to watch my clay planting video for that. What I really want to go over in this video is anything that might be particular to a crepe myrtle. The first thing I did was I pulled my mulch back, which happens to be pine straw. Make sure you pull any mulch you have way, way back from the hole before you ever get started. There's some more right there. We don't want to mix any of that into the hole. I actually have a heavy clay soil here, but because I have been mulching here for the last, um, here's some of it still in a, a clump here. Because I've been mulching this space though for the last 20 years or so, this soil has actually improved quite a bit. So I'm going to amend this, but I'm not going to amend it a whole lot. If you have very heavy clay soils like this, we'll use pine bark soil conditioner and I'm going to use some of that. If you have sandier soils, you definitely would lean more toward peat moss, which would hold some water in place. I've just basically dug this hole and then I stuck this container down in it just to make sure I had about the right fit. I've dug it to the depth of this container. I'm actually going to end up putting some loose soil back in the bottom of it. When we get to that point, I'm going to pull this container out, mix my soil amendments with the soil that's around the edge of the hole. I'm going to put some of that material back into the bottom so a little bit of that mix will be under the plant. I'm going to pour my pine bark onto this soil that I had pulled out. I also have an open bag of compost and it's a kind of a chunky compost blend. I'm going to use that as well, which will also help me with some drainage, be a little bit of a fertilizer component. Oh. All right. Set that aside. Okay. What I got to do now is just blend this compost into this existing soil and this bark into this existing soil pretty consistently around the hole. The stuff that fell in is no problem. I'm just gonna mix that in with the loose soil that's down there like that. If you see any old roots or rocks in the bottom of the hole, I will typically remove those. And I'm just smoothing out the bottom of the hole. Okay, so we have our pine bark and compost blended a little bit with that soil around the edge and some of that in the bottom of that hole. The one thing we definitely know about crepe myrtles is they're always gonna be root bound, meaning that the roots are gonna be wrapped around for sure many, many times inside. They are very aggressive rooting. They actually don't make great container plants. They tend to grow out of whatever container they're in very, very quickly because of the aggressive nature with which they root in a container. So I'll definitely hit this a few times around the edge and then pull on this heaviest part of the stem and slide that container off. Believe it or not, I had watered this plant several times and it's still dry right here. This thing has got so many roots in this mass that it water's just passing right through it. There's very little soil actually left in here, but I'm gonna go and take my shovel and I'm just gonna cut three or four places around the edge like this. I'm being pretty aggressive with this. And then I'm actually, then I'm gonna take my hand and do this and really pull at these. You can see the bottom here is almost pure roots. We need to get these things hanging outward instead of continuing to wrap around one another for sure. I'm even gonna take this bottom and just make some cuts with the edge of my shovel like that. And that should do it. I'm gonna dry fit this into this hole and I want this thing sticking up an inch or two above this existing grade. And right now it's just too low. So I'm gonna come back, pull it back out again, take some of the soil mix that's around the edge and add it to the base of it. This is still pretty chunky, so I'm gonna to continue to break these pieces up as we do this. Like that. Set them in place now. Make sure it's about the way we want it, oriented the way we want it. And I think that's gonna be about right. I'll give you a close up of that. So here we are, you can see this wire right here. Always be careful, kinda of know where your wires are. I've got two 
stopped at the cable company and <laughs> had put in a long time ago and they're barely buried at all. I just happened to know they were there. So I haven't heard them today, but um, definitely want to write those things down. If you ever find wires in your yard, write it down somewhere so that the next time you dig, you'll know where they are. But you can see I've left this thing up probably two inches above that existing grade right there. These roots are pretty much coming out from the edge of the plant now. So that's kind of perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and backfill this thing all the way around. I'll start on one side and just feather the loose soil into the edge if there's any clumps left. Continue to break those up with your shovel. And I'll go around one time, just like that. And then I actually start stomping around it just like that breaking up some of these clumps at the same time okay so this is about perfect i'm going to continue to use my foot now continue to break some of these clumps up and just keep pulling this soil up to the edge of this root ball but nothing on top of the root ball Okay, so I have that stomp down all the way around and got most of the air pockets out of it. Anything that's sitting on top of that existing root ball, I'm taking that off. You can still see the top of it. I'm still sticking up about an inch above what available soil I had here. Let me pull a little bit more of that up. And then I'm gonna take my mulch, which happens to be pine straw, and I'm going to spread that back out around the plant and I'm gonna put nothing on this trunk. I'm gonna keep it a couple inches back from where this thing goes in the ground. I wanna see the base of this plant just like it was in that container. I don't have enough pine straw. I need to re-mulch my yard, so I'll do that in the next few weeks. But for now, this should be adequate to get the soil covered enough to hold the moisture in place and keep the sun from damaging the roots with any direct contact on the roots. Now, one thing about where I've placed this crepe myrtle, it's on the west side of my house. It's absolutely positively gonna cook from about noon until the sun goes down. It's probably not getting enough morning light. I'd probably prefer to have this thing someplace where it's gonna dry off pretty quickly in the morning because they are susceptible to powdery mildew, but this is a mildew resistant variety, so I think I'll be okay on that. And it's in an open enough space here where it should dry off pretty quickly in the morning. So I hope I don't have that issue, but I'll monitor it and see. The last two steps that I'm gonna do, number one, I'm gonna cut about 20% of the top of this plant off. Every flower's coming off. If this thing's in flower, it's summertime. I just did about 20% damage to those roots. I wanna take about 20% off the top to make up for that. And then I'm going to drown it. I'm gonna pull my water hose over to it, set it on a trickle at the base and saturate this entire area. And then I'm going to back off. I'm probably not gonna water again for a week. It's supposed to be 100 degrees here this week. Most people would absolutely panic in that situation. Just water, 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 water. Like I say, I'm just gonna drown it. Because I've cut it back, it's not gonna be using as much water. In about four or five days, I'm gonna come back over here, stick my finger down about two inches into the ground if it's dry, I'm gonna drown it again. If it continues to be moist, I'm gonna check it again maybe two days after that. And that's basically it. Okay guys, that's it. I've taken 20% off the top of this thing. I'll get it watered in the ground with like I say, a slow trickle. Really, really super easy. I don't think I'll have to do much to it since I've taken out most of the water use off the top of this thing. 
thank you for watching my video and if it was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos also comment below with any questions you have about planting thanks again